In this video with the Anking, I'm going to go over how to honor your psych rotation, including how I used Anki to prepare for the shelf exam. Now, if you've been following along, I've done quite a few videos at this point on every rotation. I'm almost finished with my rotations, and I've got a playlist now you can go to and watch all of them. This includes a video on OSCEs, which is relevant to any rotation, but hopefully this is a good resource for you. Now, outline for this video right now, we're going to go week to week. Uh, what, what what life was like, things I would have done the same, things I would do differently, and then some general rotation tips and biohacks, which were not as pertinent to this rotation as something as like surgery. <laughs> So rotation work hours. Uh, this was a fairly easy rotation uh, by work hours. So my first two weeks were at one inpatient location. And I worked from about 7 a.m. to 2 or 3 p.m. was usually when I was finished with my notes. We usually finished rounding around 12 to 1. The next one, weeks 3 to 4, I was at a VA location. And I was usually from like 8 to noon, 8 to 1. It was pretty easy and that was somewhat COVID related because we were restricted on patients and such. So my four-week plan, what did I do? Well, before the rotation, I, I did my Anki cards. And I've been doing this for every rotation, and it's been very helpful. So the last two weeks of the previous rotation, I went through and did all the Anki cards for Psych. And it ends up being like 30 flashcards a day, and I'm actually not doing all 30. Some of them I'm just saying, like, I don't actually need this in suspending. So it's actually very manageable. Uh, week one, I studied Amboss, which really doesn't have that many site questions, and so I purchased UWorld and did that. This is the first rotation I've used UWorld for. Um, I do prefer Amboss. I think it's a better QBank, but Amboss didn't have that many questions for Psych, so I started doing UWorld. And um, our our bar for how well you have to do on this shelf was pretty high because it's an easier shelf. So I felt like I needed the extra practice. Week two, I continued to do UWorld every day. And then week three, I was going to do UWorld, but then my wife had a baby. We have a beautiful daughter, our little Anki princess. And so that week, I only got one MVME done, and that was it. Um, but I was spending time in the hospital with my wife and baby. And then week four, I did one MBME. I was planning on doing another one, but I was exhausted because of the baby stuff and didn't do that. And then I studied a little bit for the OSCE. I would still recommend doing all three MBMEs. I wish that I had. Okay, things I would do the same. Definitely would do all the MBMEs, all of UWorld, all of AMBOSS. It's very manageable. This is an easier rotation. I would strongly recommend you get through all of that. The next thing is start the conversation with every patient. I had multiple attendings mention something about this and just what I mean is essentially when you go into the room, you start the conversation, say hi, how are you doing, and then kind of follow up on how things went from yesterday, whatever you had talked about, things like that. It shows that you've been paying attention and you're engaged in every patient even if it's not necessarily the one that you were following. The next thing is don't be afraid of confrontation. Now, <laughs> what do I mean by this? You're going to work with lots of different types of patients on psych. And some of the patients you'll work with um, have to be there. They don't get to choose to go home. Um, but, but they're still a human being and they're still autonomous and we try and work with them and you know, let them decide what kind of medications they want, when they want to do stuff. And it's, it's kind of a difficult dynamic. But there's sometimes where you will commit a patient to do something, to work on something, and they, they don't do it. And so when you're following up on that, don't be afraid to say, hey, man, what the heck? You know, we, we worked on this and, and you didn't do it. I thought you wanted to get out of the hospital. You know, that's your goal. That's my goal. But to do that, we agreed on this step. That's what I mean by confrontation, not actually yelling at each other or anything like that. But I did have an attending mention that they were impressed that I was doing that and like really taking the initiative to help move this patient along and get them out of the hospital safely. And I've mentioned this for every rotation. Ask your attending at the beginning of the week, what do you expect of me to honor this rotation? Another option is to ask them halfway through and say, you know, what do you expect of me to honor this rotation? Where do you want me to improve? What kinds of things do you want me to work on? I did that on this rotation and I felt like I had a great relationship with my attending because of it. Every day he had something new he wanted me to work on and I felt like I really improved because of this. Other things to do the same. With Anki, I got up early every morning, I did all of my questions, and I felt like that was really helpful. I didn't have to worry about it when I got home. I was just done. Um, and you know, I had a later start, so it was reasonably easy to do that. I did my flashcards later in the day. And like I said, this was a good decision for me because I'm more of a morning person. Next thing is I, can t I left my interval modifier in Anki at 130%. That means I see cards a little bit less often. I felt like that was totally appropriate for Psych, and I would definitely do that again. 
other things. On Anki, there's the countdown to events exam add-on, and I loved that. Uh, it's just super nice to see how many days you have to shelf exam. It's not really necessary, but it's fun. And then the filtered decks. I love the custom filtered decks. It just makes it easy to separate all the cards that are relevant to Psych because, you know, at this point I've already done five rotations and things kind of start to mix together. And there is a lot of Psych on things like Peds and Internal Medicine and other board or shelf exams that you're taking. So it's nice to just separate all the ones that are relevant to Psych. I have a video on that on custom filtered decks if you want to go and watch that. Things I would do differently. I would study the step one psych material. I made that mistake. I thought, oh, hey, there's only a few hundred flashcards. This will be easy because there's not that much step two stuff. Like, I'll remember it. But then the shelf was, like, entirely step one material. Basically, I could have taken that shelf after having taken step one and known pretty much everything. So I would definitely go back and study the step one material, especially things like um, how many months it needs to be in order to qualify for a certain disorder. Things like that were really important. Use my note template less. So on Psych, you can have a clipboard and you can have essentially the whole template of every question that you need to ask when you're doing a HMP and things like that, uh, which was great. But it didn't help me for the OSCE. I wasn't super prepared for the OSCE because I'd kind of been relying on that throughout the four weeks that I'd been in the hospital. And then along the lines with that, it, in my actual charting notes every day, I would just copy and paste the psych exam from the day before. I think it would have been helpful to write the psych exam by scratch at least a few times to help with the OSCE because this is essentially a new exam. It's no longer cardiovascular, pulmonary, and stuff. You have to remember all of these other things like thought content and um, attitude, behavior, things like that that you haven't necessarily done before. It's very unique. Okay, so some general rotation tips. Enjoy the relaxed schedule. Like This was super easy. It was great. Uh, it's a great time to have a baby <laughs> planning on that. Uh, enjoy it because you don't necessarily get to enjoy a lot of free time during your third year of medical school. This is a pattern that I learned uh, while I was actually a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I feel like it really applies to psych. Um, and not only to psych, but these are good skills that are when you're going to any specialty, they'll be good to have. If you have a diabetic patient, you still need to have them work with you to you know, lose weight, change their diet, uh, take their medications, things like that. And so what I mean by this invite, commit, follow up is you're going to invite the patient to do something that you want them to do. You're not going to tell them. You're going to invite them. You know, are, you, are you willing to, to do this every day? Um, you know, on psych... For some of our patients, it was, are you willing to go to group sessions all day tomorrow? And they'd say, I'm not willing to go to all of them, but I'm willing to go to three. And I'd say, how about four? And they'd say, okay. I'd say, all right, you're going to go to four group sessions tomorrow. So you commit them to that. And then the next day, you follow up. You say, how many groups did you go to? How did it go? How was that? And... And sometimes I find it helps if the first time they don't follow up, you repeat this process, invite, commit. And then when you follow up or before you end that session, you say, I'm going to follow up with you tomorrow. That way they know you're going to ask tomorrow and they're more ready for it. They're more likely to do it. And then remember the patient's goals day to day. Uh, you're a team and you want your goals to be the patient's goals. And so you work with them. And then day to day, like I said, you want to start the conversation every day when you go in. If you remember what that patient's goal is, that's a great place to start your conversation with them. And then biohacks, I really only have one. You know, in the past, I've recommended different drink things or getting compression socks, but you're really, you're sitting down comfortably. So really all you need is a good clipboard. You're going to want it for this rotation. Um, even the attending was using one and it's really handy. But other than that, Good luck on your rotation. I thought Psych was incredible. I had a lot of fun, and I know you will too. Thanks for learning with The On King. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here, as well as follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. That is at OnKingMed. Also, feel free to reach out via email or check out our website, OnKingMed.com, for more tips and tricks.